Live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE. Covering E3 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're actually in the Warner Brothers um, games booth, it's a humongous booth. We're kind of in the uh, inner sanctum uh, here at E3 in the LA Convention Center. A lot of stuff going on with Warner Brother Games. A lot of really cool combinations of brands uh, and games and movies. But this is a very special one, Hitman 2. We're all excited to be uh, here, learn more about it. We have Jacob Mickelson. He's actually the game director for IO Interactive. Jacob, great to see you. Yo, thank you. So Good let's just you. get to the basics. First off, when is Hitman 2 coming out? What do people need to know? We'll get that out of the yeah, way. Yeah, Hitman. Get Hitman 2 is out November 13, uh, and if you pre-order now, you have a special pre-order bonus where you get access to a new game mode called Sniper Assassin, which is a, it's a sniper-only mission, and then for the first time in Hitman history, we also have a co-op mode where you can snipe uh, alongside a friend into the mission and create all sorts of havoc. It's, uh, it's still deeply funded in the, in the roots of the game's kind of DNA, where it's all about getting away with uh, the sniping without anyone kind of noticing that you're there. So, right. so it's kind of, it has a very, very strong puzzle element to it. Right. So it's about kind of peeling off the layers of an onion without anyone noticing you're there. So you talked a little, a little bit before we turn on the cameras about kind of the freedom that a player gets, yeah. not like in a traditional game, where they can choose a lot of different options Precisely. of how they're going to do the mission. So you know, how do you guys come up with that? How, how is that all kind of determined? And how do you actually then still keep the game true to the, to the mission? Well, the thing is that, um, that yeah, as you say, it's, it's, it's very much, we call it a hyper-detailed sandbox, right? So, so when you play a Hitman mission, we don't give you a linear path through the level that you follow. We give you a, an, an open sandbox where you kind of have to figure out how do you want to approach this mission. And in case of the mission we're showing here at E3, it's a, it's a race event in Miami. And your target is one of the race drivers, actually. Uh, that's half of the mission. And she's roaming around the track. So the whole thing in the demo today is, uh, OK, so how do you get close to Shara's car? And then in order to do that, then you need to obtain disguises, which is a key element in the Hitman franchise that you can disguise as, as the characters you meet in the scene. Right. So you can, uh, you know, knock them out and become, and like, take their uh, uniforms right. on and uh, and then infiltrate the areas. Uh, some guards are more suspicious of you than others, so you can have you mingle your way through the level. So it's, it's very much um, up to you if you want to sneak in and try not to do the disguise stuff, or you can go with the disguise stuff and then kind of make your way. And then the game kind of, adapts in a way because because we have to kind of foresee all these different permutations right, of right. play. So there's a lot of things you can do in the game in terms of which way you take right. and, and how you get there. Uh, so, so I'm just curious from a game development point of view in terms of like how, building in difficulty. Because you want to have enough difficulties that it's a challenge and people feel satisfaction in rising to the challenge. But clearly you can make it so they just got wiped out every time, right? Exactly. You can make it an impossible game. Yeah. So how do you how do you find that balance? How do you tune that balance? What are some of the things you think about I think when that, you're trying to get in degree of difficulty? Well, that's a really, uh, this whole how difficult should it be, that's a really, it's a, it's a very hard question to answer in a Hitman game because because of the many ways that the players can do it, right? So, so we kind of, uh, we, we have an initial idea about why we want to kind of challenge the players and why we want to give them a bit more kind of leash where they can just kind of roam around. But once you get a new disguise, then then it's a different scenario and we have to account for that in our design. So we do a lot of iterations on this. Okay, so if I went to the right and went this way in through the level where there was no resistance, I hadn't, I didn't have to do anything, I could just like, walk in straight in the main door. Then we have to go back to the drawing board and then uh, jiggle around the characters, maybe add some new ones, remove some, and, and you know, change the, the, the amount of guards. Uh, so, so the player will have challenges no matter how they kind of approach it. But in the end, the crazy thing is, no matter how hard we make it or how challenging that we make it, they will always find crazy ways of bypassing the systems and bending the rules of the game so much. And that's what, what makes Hitman great, is that, right. that, that you, can, you can do all of these things. Um, can kind of just what you okay? Can I do this? Yes, and you go and try it, and maybe it worked out. Maybe ah, uh, it didn't. Well, it was not a good idea in the end. But but it's very much up to you as the player to figure out how you want to be creative right. around this. So we're doing this series as part of the Western Digital Data Makes Possible, and data is such a big part of what you guys do. 
and really as, as gaming has moved off of the pure console into the connected world, gives you an opportunity as a developer to see really how are people interacting with the game? Yeah. How are they making decisions? So how do you guys look at the analytics? You must be doing more and more and more analytics on all these various movements and potential options yeah. that they have. We, we have systems in place to kind of figure out where people get spotted so we can we can actually see that. Uh, the tricky part about metrics is that, that, that you know, during during development, there's actually not that many people playing the game besides ourselves, right? So we rely heavily on user testing, where we, we where we subdue people to the game, kind of we place people in front of the game in very early stages uh, to to see if our core ideas are working, uh, and then based on that, we then look at video footage, interviews, and all that stuff to kind of th that feedback uh, in, into the design loop of, right. of the process. And is it, have you uh, basically mapped every potential option or using AI and stuff like you just use the example, some guy's too smart, we really need to have more guards for this guy. I mean, is, is, there, is there AI and intelligence in the game that you can make little fine-tuned adjustments well, along the path as they, people uh, actually play the game? Because you're going to have a whole lot more data yeah, yeah. Uh, by December 1st, right? Precisely, the, the amount of data we get is, is, is pretty wild in the end. Uh, but but the core of the game, the the characters are, are kind of AI driven, right? They have uh, they have their own kind of uh, plans that they want to do, uh, and and the way it works is that uh, we then kind of build uh, stories on top of this core AI. So the designers they have they have freedom to create custom moments, uh, but at some point when the when things go kind of in the fence for the player, you get spotted, or, or you know someone sees through your disguise. Then the AI takes over, and uh, I, I, I dare to say that we have some of the most complex AI systems in the industry. Uh, we go to great lengths to kind of have them be very uh, living uh, and, and kind of communicating a lot. So. You know, if one guy uh, finds a, a body, then it's one situation. If he has a friend, then they, they, they begin to talk about what they've experienced, and they work together to kind of figure out what, what is actually going on. Right. So there's a very high level of, of, of AI running behind the scenes in, in the Hitman game. And do you do that at the level of the characters? So it's it's really how a character responds to yes. different stimuli versus just kind of a generic overlay for the whole game? Well, it's a mix. Uh, some of them, you know, there are different kinds of uh, characters, guards, civilians, and they, they have different behaviors based on what happens uh, but each each character is, is more or less his himself and then he's not kind of hive mind controlled it, it's it is kind of a lot of agents that are running around in in, in the world trying to figure out what this player is up to right. uh, creating creating havoc behind the scenes uh, so it's it kind of it, it's a lot of fun to, to kind of uh, to kind of work with it because it's also so unpredictable and then all of a sudden something happened that you didn't expect right because uh, you can't you can't possibly scenario no exactly. every every potential exactly, exactly, every potential right. outcome right no exactly we, we have some control but but it's it's systemically based right so so we kind of the way we normally say it's like we encourage the characters to do things right and right. then they, they they might do it right for instance you and i are having an interview right now that requires that you're standing in your spot and i'm standing in my spot if i were to create that scene in the game then there is a certain chance that one of us is lying in a dumpster somewhere and never shows up for the interview. And then the next question is, okay, so what do you do? Right, right. So we have to kind of construct the game in a way so that you won't break down and stop here. I don't know if you remember in season one of Westworld, if you've seen that. I have seen season one. I haven't, I haven't caught up on season two yet, but yes, season I haven't one. haven't started season yeah. two yet, but in season one, there's this scene where there's a, a bonfire scene that breaks down where all the characters just stop. And then uh, it turns out that the guy who went for firewood has been killed. Uh, so he never returned with the firewood, and thereby the entire bonfire scene just grinds to a halt. Freezes. That is Hitman game development in a nutshell. Right. That's like that. Then then we have a bug when that thing happens, and right. that can that can happen in our when we during development we do that stuff. Oh, right. So, so it's got to be so cool to discover how people actually work their way through the game. Absolutely. Because the other thing I think it's interesting that you guys always have to balance is you know you have a narrative, you want to have a narrative, you have a story, you have characters, and a look and feel. At the same time, you have individual operators, the, the players that are kind of have bringing their own kind of point of view to the game. Yeah. So how do you how do you balance when do you when does one take priority to the other? How do you keep it on that well, narrative flow? It's it's been one of these. Uh, it's like returning challenges of making a Hitman game, and with the previous game, we kind of kind of narrowed in on okay, so how do we do this? So we have a main story that is told outside the levels, where, where uh, which 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 the levels don't directly affect. So the overall main arc and storyline is is kind of set, but but uh, but what happens in the levels kind of stays in the levels, so to speak. So so. 
in season one, we, we actually managed to go through the main story with, with some characters left alive, which is good because now in the, in the second, uh, in Hitman 2, we can actually get closer to them and, and the story uh, evolves uh, kind of around 1847 and we get a glimpse into its past, which is a, which is a bit, there's some things we haven't told yet. Right, uh, right. So that's going to be very exciting to see that as well. All right. Well, Jacob, thanks for uh, spending a few a few minutes and uh, good, good luck with the launch. Congrats on the, uh, the new product. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Nice talking to you. He's Jacob, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're in the Warner Brothers Games booth uh, at E3 at Lake Convention Center. Thanks for watching.